You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Mike Mish Shedlock, editor of Mish's Global Economic Trend Analysis. Merry Christmas, Mike. Hey, uh, Merry Christmas to you and, and all the listeners. Uh, just before we went to air, we were talking about those poor people who thought the price of natural gas would balloon this winter like it did last winter. No such luck. Well, it didn't balloon last winter, but but a few winters ago, you know, natural gas, you know, got, got to you know, well over 10 bucks, and I think it approached 18, something like that, 12, 14. I, I had energy companies calling me up every day, you know, oh, my gosh, you'd better lock in your price. It's almost as if they knew that this thing was going to crash. You better lock in before it gets any higher. So now I, I, I see uh, uh, natural gas is still under 2 bucks, and apparently was up today because of uh, weather, colder weather is supposedly on the way. Meanwhile, it's it's 40 degrees here in Chicago. Uh, it's supposed to be 58 degrees tomorrow. So, um, oh, obviously this is a, a global warming here, uh, Jim. <laughs> yeah, El Nino, and I've I've been told El Nino has happened because there's a lot of under ocean volcanic eruptions this year. No, nothing to do with what happens on the surface. It's all deep underneath the ocean. <laughs> Oh, they're they're all guessing. NASA came out with a report, you know, yesterday, and and actually said emissions are leading to global cooling. So let's see how they spin this damn thing. And of course, uh, 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 temperatures had been falling for 15 years here, and until uh, the scientists went out and re- revised the data uh, in a let's say very unbelievable way and all of a sudden the next thing you know in, in spite of temperatures actually falling for the last 15 years somehow we had the warmest weather on uh, uh, ever you know it, it, it's all a bunch of crap if you ask me and n- no one can believe this because it's politically motivated revised re-revised the only thing acceptable is an answer that says, you know, that that carbon dioxide is leading to global warming. It, to me, it's all a bunch of freaking hooey going back, trying to figure this out and trying to maintain this over the course of hundreds of millions of years with all of these variables and concluding that it's man-made carbon dioxide leading to this. Now, the good thing out of this is if China does reduce, reduce its pollution, I'm all in favor of that. I'm certainly not in favor of, of, of pollution. But I'm talking about real pollution here, you know, the stuff that's killing people, that's causing asthma, you know, that it would, it would be very good for China to clean up all of this stuff. If it reduces carbon dioxide uh, emissions, uh, you know, I, I, I suppose that's not a bad thing. But let's not say, you know, we, we need to do this or, or Florida is going to sink into the ocean next year. Well, carbon taxes have been in B.C. now for six or seven years. Hasn't changed anybody's driving habits. And our skies here are very clear because cars emit less pollution. And the thing is, in China, they've only brought in pollution controls for cars in the past year. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Mish, if we're we're taking a look at what's going to happen in the new year, what are you going to predict? Well, I, I've been calling for a recession here. GDP, third quarter GDP came out today around 2%, which is pretty much what everyone expected. New homes, or excuse me, existing home sales today were, were a veritable disaster. Uh, I, I, I had to get a chuckle out of this because the National Association of Realtors uh, 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 came out with a statement today saying that this was all because of of a rule change. They said that this is because uh, of no before you owe. Uh, uh, they implemented this rule change that said uh, uh, that lenders had to go over with their borrowers, you, you know, precise things, and there was a three-day delay period. And I went back and I said, okay, when, 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 did, when did this rule change happen? And apparently it happened in October, October 3rd, I believe, to be precise. And uh, so if this rule change led to this 10% uh, 
plunge in new home sales. Hmm, why didn't we see it in October? The, the, uh, that's the first thing I have to ask. Now, there was a small decline in October, uh, uh, which the NAR called disturbing. They didn't use the word disturbing this month when there was a 10.5% plunge. They instead bended on something that happened two months ago. So um, uh, we'll see. Next month might be the tell. My personal belief is, okay, maybe this impacted it a little bit, but more than likely new home sales are just dramatic. Excuse me, existing home sales are dramatically weakening. We get new home sales reports tomorrow. Now, this year, because we've had such a mild fall right across North America, they're saying retail sales are down because we couldn't get into the Christmas spirit. I remember last year when we had storms around uh, late November and going into Christmas, they blamed bad weather for slowing yes, yes, retail yes. sales. Yes, uh, 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 very accurate. The, the weather's either too bad or too good. Actually, in one of the reports recently, they they said it was just like it was like too mild. You know, it, it, you know, so uh, not too hot, not too cold, just just plain too good. <laughs> So it's it, it's 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 kind of ridiculous here. Uh, I, I'm I'm just looking at all these manufacturing reports. ISM uh, uh, was was a huge disaster. Now, actually, the Richmond Fed regional report came out today, and 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 it showed a, a surge in activity for into the plus column for the first time in five months or something. And I'm every time I, I see one of these. My initial belief is this is an outlier, and sure enough, every one of these so far has been exactly that. And it's not like Richmond's that huge of a you know manufacturing hub in the first place, but but we'll see. Meanwhile, the the uh, retail uh, 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 PSI has has been weakening consumers has been weakening so we'll see and we'll see what the christmas sales will and i do have one prediction for next year that just popped into my mind i think we're going to see some some huge above normal um uh uh corrections in 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 layoffs here coming up in january we won't see that january report though until february but uh that's that's what i'm you know, uh, uh, think is going to happen. I think we're going to see uh, above uh, uh, average, way above average uh, uh, layoffs uh, come January. Some analysts have told me the reason that retail sales are slower this year is uh, people are tr- are trying to save some money now because they're expecting bad job results next month. Uh, I don't know if you go by any of this. I don't believe any of these consumer sentiment number stuff until you get to extremes. When, when, when sentiment gets to a, 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 a big extreme, you're probably going to get a reversal. But, but the, the fact of the matter is, just based on population growth, uh, consumer spending tends to go up every year. Now, at, at some point, that's, that's, that's not going to hold true anymore simply because boomers are retiring, you know, and they they retire, you know, they're going to buy that, that that one last car, they're going to try and make it go a number of years. And speaking of cars, of, of, of course, inventory levels are, are, are way up. Sales are starting to stall here at at a high level, they claim. I think it's more like a spinning top here that's starting to wobble and is going to fall over. We've had auto sales since 2009 have been absolutely going gangbusters, and it's largely driven by subprime and and low low prime borrowing. I think we're going to see some of that come to an end. Um, new homes certainly aren't aren't affordable to the millennials. They have they have to take care of of, of their aging boomer parents. Uh, they've still got all the student debt that's not been uh, wound off. Uh, there's there's not a lot of reason to look forward to renewed uh, 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 home buying or family formation, which is one of the things that's going to drive the economy. 
So I, I and then we've got the the Fed hikes on it, and and a literal disaster case, and in, in, in some junk bond issuance. I think 2016 is is the year some of this stuff comes to head. We'll see. I'll be surprised if the Fed gets in four four rate hikes in, in, in next year. We'll have more with Mitch Shedlock right after the break. Unbelievable harmonies, spectacular performance, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Bird Dog and the Vintage Electric Band, Saturday, January 9th at the Alex Goulden Hall. Buy online and save at OnTourTickets.com. See singing impressionist Andre Philippe Gagnon. And I think to myself. In Oliver, December 29th. In Kelowna, December 30th. Buy online and save at OnTourTickets.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Mike Mish Shedlock. Mish, what's your outlook on oil? I see in one of your articles that Russia is pumping out more oil than ever, even though the prices are low. Um, it's uh, OPEC's pumping, Iraq's pumping, uh, uh, Iran with with the agreement uh, uh, worked out with the Obama administration that I'm actually in favor of with the sanctions coming off. Iran's going to be pumping more oil. So uh, the oil patch in the immediate short term does not look all that promising. In the long term, I, I think it might. Oil is one of those sectors that's genuinely beat up like gold. It, it, it's, it's a sector that, that when it returns, uh, when, when things do start improving finally, whenever that is, or um, the demand increases, or supply decreases, any of those things, the gains in oil, uh, oil-related oil stocks might be extraordinary. I'm not sure this is the time to be uh, uh, plunging into them. I've not done anything in that sector, but uh, it's one that I've got my eye on. I, I certainly like gold and gold miners here. I like things that are beaten up. Gold is beaten up, miners are beaten up, energy is beaten up. Uh, so th- those are the places where uh, some emerging market is, uh, are, are beaten up. Uh, some sectors like Brazil perhaps you want to keep an eye on, uh, uh, although they're politically not stable now. But if there's any stability in, uh, in the Brazilian government, uh, that's going to be a big plus for them. Uh, I, I like Russia is very much out of favor. Uh, 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 Japan, I, I still like. I, I think Abi's going to go crazy here, uh, uh, and and with another round of uh, yen debasement, and of course China's debasing the yuan. So you know we've got all this currency destability here, and uh, I think there's likely to be a currency crisis somewhere starting in, in some unknown country. In, in, in 2016 as well. Well, uh, in Canada, we're in a bit of a currency crisis now with our lo- loony down around 70 cents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and everyone thought, you know, uh, the U.S. dollar was going to go to hell, and, and now everyone thinks the loony is going to go to hell. So uh, 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 here, you know, we're likely to see a reversal in some of these trends. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm not sure starting at, at, at what point. But but dollar sentiment is really high. Looney sentiment is low. So is sentiment on the Aussie dollar and the Brazilian real. So uh, uh, those are the types of plays that that one can at least start looking at, eyeing, watching uh, 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 for for contrarian type of uh, sentiment. C- certainly, you know, the, the Looney was no bargain when it was trading uh, uh, well above parity with the U.S. dollar. So now the question is: Is is it, now that it's sunken dramatically over thirty percent here, uh, uh, is is now the time to like the loony? Well, certainly we're getting closer to that point than, than than we were when everyone loved it. Well, now and then there's always a movement that Canada should adopt the U.S. dollar, should it? <laughs> I've not heard that. Is, is, that a, is that a serious proposal? Well, all these countries in the Caribbean that use the U.S. dollar like their own currency. Yeah, I don't think Canada would ever do that. And there was always there was this talk of the Amero, you know, which was ridiculous that the U.S., Canada, and 
and uh, Mexico would, would would get together, and you know, and you know, just because someone invented a coin and and called it the Amero and, and 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 talked about it, did not mean it was going to happen. I mean, people talk about all kinds of crazy things. Uh, uh, no, uh, Canada is not about to adopt the U.S. dollar. What about Bitcoin? It, it used to be the darling, and I haven't heard much about it lately. Um, well, the technology is is is, is certainly going to be in use in more and more and more places. Uh, 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 Goldman Sachs tried to get a patent on it for for settling financial transactions. Uh, uh, to me, the technology is what it is. I don't know how someone else can come along and, and do a patent. You know, they had some weird idea where they wanted the the SEC or something to be in control of it. Well, the beauty of of Bitcoin and, and 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 the uh, uh, algorithm in general is that no one is in damn control of it. No, so no one can influence it. Uh, 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 so you know, Goldman's proposal to you know have the SEC behind it is just a bunch of hooey. You know, maybe it's something that made their patent unique and was was able to get them that patent or at least apply for that patent. But no, uh, the technology is, is is certainly here to stay. Whether or not Bitcoin itself uh, uh, survives, I, I think is pretty moot. Well, Vancouver has uh, an ATM that uses Bitcoin down in the business district. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, j- 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 uh, the big use for Bitcoin right now is is money laundering in China to to get around capital controls. So, uh, 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 and you know, the the bad part of the technology is is that if it's adopted by a central government somewhere, it's going to be adopted in a manner where they are going to know where every penny is at every time, and and, and everything you bought, everything you traveled, every every place you went, you know, uh, uh, literally every candy bar you bought will have been done. With a, uh, a digital currency that will be kept track of every step of the way, and 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 all this information w- will be out there, you know, for for literally the government or, or someone, you know, to to you know use against you for however they want. So I I think that's the uh, uh, although that'll stop you know money laundering per se. The, the the negative implications are these idiots might just decide to do something like go out there uh, 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 and and institute negative uh, 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 money rates across the board, and you could not stop yourself from that by holding cash because cash would cease to exist. So we we we, we would all become more at the mercies of the feds and the central banks. Uh, 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 abilities to try and force us to spend by implementing negative interest rates. I was just going to ask about the, the war on cash, why governments are so eager to wipe it out. Uh, uh, they are, and it's for tax collection purposes, but the nefarious uh, 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 aspect of, of that is, is, is what central banks might do uh, uh, once, that's, once that's in place. And of course, I mean, where I live in, in Vancouver, a lot of the small stores and restaurants right now only accept cash because they don't want to pay these high fees to the credit card companies. Well, they're accepting cash because they're 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 hiding transactions, and uh, uh, yeah, part of it is fees, and 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 certainly something like like Bitcoin um, actually can remove those fees entirely. Uh, 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 that's another strength of, of, of the algorithm. So yeah, it, w- it would hurt all of the MasterCards of the world w- w- when, w- when we go to a system like that. That's the good, and I gave you the bad. The bad is the government knows everything you did, everywhere you went, every penny you have, uh, 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 and the, the, the real bad news is what the Fed might be able to do with that with negative interest rates. We've done previous shows about the robots are coming. Do you have any predictions on that? No predictions on robots other than the trend obviously is going to continue. The, uh, both hardware and software robots are coming. I just did a report on, on, on reshoring on my blog. Everyone said manufacturing jobs are coming back to the United States. My position was, well, the, the manufacturing was returning to the United States. 
but not so much the jobs. And uh, uh, yesterday we all learned, well, uh, 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 n- neither is really true, uh, that except for the year 2011, every year since 2004, man- uh, manufacturing jobs have fled the United States. Robots are so much cheaper. Will a day come if robots are, are driving the taxis and the trucks and so on that the government might have to uh, put a tax on that to support all the people who have been unemployed by those uh, uh, developments in technology? Well, that's the Krugman plan, to tax robots and redistribute the money. The, 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 the real problem here is is the Fed holding interest rates low uh, uh, letting corporations borrow, investing in all these technologies. They've reduced the price of capital. They've encouraged speculation. They've done all of these other things. And, 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 and during the next crisis, more jobs are going to vanish because of, uh, of this built up of imbalances. The Fed needs to not stop blaming robots, but rather blame themselves. All right, Jim, and, and, and with that, I uh, uh, once again wish all the listeners a Merry Christmas and, and a Happy New Year. And the same to you, Mike. Thanks. My guest has been Mike Mish Shedlock, editor of Mish's Global Economic Trend Analysis. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. Comments about the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com. I'm Jim Goddard. Merry Christmas, everybody. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.